dad always whistled. And just, it was probably, you know, without even thinking about it, it was always whistling. So I just, as a kid, I guess, started whistling. And I, it's just kind of a, it's almost like a, I don't even think about it, you know, just to the back of your mind. And, and I don't even realize I'm doing it sometimes. <laughs> That's good. My name is Chris Ellett. I'm a computer specialist at UETN. Worked here for 23 years now. I grew up in Salt Lake City, came up here to Logan to Utah State, and fell in love with it and never left. And so uh, before this job, I, my first job was doing radio news for the NPR station here on campus. And that was early morning news, four to 8 a.m. And I also had a night part-time job at the time to make ends meet. And so that was about 10 years of being a ski bum, basically. <laughs> I worked nights, had days free, so I skied almost every day and had a great time and would not change that for anything. And so the part-time job was in the same, same building as the job I'm in now, although we have moved since then. So I heard about this job and I knew a bunch of the people involved. So I just started wandering down the hall and checking out what it involved and realizing that uh, I could probably fit in. And it's funny because when I interviewed for the job, it is a technical job, but like I said, customer service is, is really our tier one uh, main responsibility. And in the interview, they asked me more. Uh, so my night job, I attended bar for many years. So during the interview, they asked me more questions about customer service at the bar and dealing with upset customers more than any technical questions. So I said, I have the people skills to deal with these customers and I have really good customer service and I can learn the technical stuff. So I think that's how I got the job. <laughs> and it's been 23 years now. Me and five others are part of the tier one support group. So we monitor video classes and take calls from the sites if they have problems. Maybe they didn't get connected. Maybe their camera's not working, no audio, this or that. So we're the first line that the calls come to. So we deal with people that might be upset over something. They've got a classroom of people. They're missing their event. So that's why I think our customer service is as an important part of the job for us. And then if it's, we try to solve the issue with just a few minutes. If it takes longer than that, then we escalate it to our tier two guys, the real smart guys. <laughs> and then they will take it from there. So we usually try to be on the call for just a few minutes, try to get it fixed quick. If not, then we escalate it and wait for another call, basically. Uh, mostly a lot of scheduling issues, especially the first of any semester. Sites that thought they were in a class waiting and the class is not connecting, because it's all automatic connect. They don't dial into anything. And ours is unique because it is two-way audio and video. They talk back and forth to the teacher. They don't just sit at home, watch on a computer. So it is interactive. That's hence IVC, Interactive Video Conferencing. So that's the main thing is probably sites that are not connected. We take the first calls and go from there, basically. But I do have a broadcast degree. And actually, Shane Thomas, who was doing video production with athletics, this was, boy, over 20 years ago, he uh, ran into me and said, oh, the gymnastics team is looking for an announcer. Maybe you could check it out, you know? So I didn't think anything of it and almost blew it off. Then called the number he gave me and they're like, yeah, come on, come on and check it out. So I went and did a little quick uh, interview and a uh, um, little voice test or whatever. And uh, they said, yeah, great, come on, do it. So I started doing gymnastics and then that led to uh, doing women's volleyball because the announcer had left. And that same year, USU, which had, well, back in the late 80s, had dropped the women's basketball program. They reinstated women's basketball, and I was able to um, get the job as a PA announcer for the women's basketball, which is the indoor announcing. I do the lineups and, you know, basketball, so-and-so, now at the foul line, not the, uh, like, radio play-by-play, -play, the indoor PA announcing. So that's been a lot of fun. I've done that for 
22 years now, and I uh, love it. You know, it's uh, excitement, kind of a thrill of a live mic, and uh, it's a great time, you know. And now, your Utah State Aggies. <laughs> My life outside of work, um, I've been married for 22 years, um, no kids, so we were both late in life uh, getting married, so no kids. We have a beautiful 100-year-old bungalow home down in the island area, a little classic uh, part of Logan. I jokingly call it the poor man's avenues. <laughs> it's one of the first neighborhoods in Logan and has all, in, all unique houses and it's really just a quaint little neighborhood that we really love. And uh, other than that, I ski a lot. I'm an avid skier. I get season passes up at our little Beaver Mountain. And during quarantine, we kind of started renovating our house. We redone the kitchen, put in a nice new uh, gas stove, done a lot of work, uh, took some siding that was on the house. It wasn't a very good job that had come before us. So took that off and have repainted our entire house. So still a process. We've got a little more to go, but that's kind of become the new hobby, a hundred year old house. And uh, <laughs> that kind of, kind of becomes what you do uh, a lot, which is fine. I've really gotten into it, become a hook. I uh, got the home improvement bug, I guess. So that takes a lot of the time too. I think uh, the rewarding part of the job is helping somebody get their issue fixed, really. And um, that's the best part, is if somebody's called and they're upset because something's not working and we'd be able to get them set up again, then that, that's the best part. And my, my favorite part is, is the people that I've met, mainly just over the phone, but as long as I've been doing it, I talk to a lot of the same facilitators from the same sites around, and I've got to know them over the years. And so it's, I think it makes, it makes them a little more comfortable knowing uh, that to, they're talking to somebody that they've talked to before and have dealt with. As a matter of fact, I've had um, a few people tell me that they were retiring, and they said, I just wanted to let you know that you are my favorite. I was always happy when you answered the phone. And that, you know, that kind of warms my heart for sure. I've had, had a few people tell me that, so that, that's kind of nice. And that's my favorite part, is getting to know the people that we deal with. And because uh, a lot of them, I've, it's been 20 years, and I've, a lot of them are still here, and I've got to know them quite well over the, over the years. So I'm sure that, you know, when I answer, and then I recognize them too, it just makes it easier, and I like to have fun and joke around with them. So it's, get, it's nice to know, to get to know the people that you're working with, even if it's just over the phone.